OK, thank you, Warim. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here uh, to give a talk to you. Um, this is a um, uh, tutorial talk, but uh, I don't want to insist your knowledge. So uh, let me talk about the, what we are thinking about the uh, <coughs> security certification of quantum system. Um, actually, it is a very um, funny, funny situation because uh, the chair with Vadim, uh, he's trying to find out the flaw in the quantum system. And uh, my job is to fix this, this flaw. So let me start about the... Um, Um, this um, this collaboration. Um, my talk is based on the uh, compact research project by uh, NYCT, and the, the the member of collaboration is following, and the the, the, the uh, job jobs are, are here. <coughs> and uh, this is part of my talk. I would like to introduce the uh, increasing threat on the quantum uh, in internet security, and uh, what is the sec the security and the uh, the, we, I, I'd like to compare the, the security proof in conventional crypt system and the, and the quantum key distribution. And the second part is the main part of my talk. I would like to talk about the uh, security certification in the quantum system. Here, the, we, um, I, I'm, I will examine the assumption in security proof and requirement, and uh, I'd like to introduce some the two case study of, of our, our group. And finally, um, if uh, the time allowed, I'd uh, kind of like to mention briefly about the, the construction of quantum security network. So um, recent days, um, many, many important information are flowing in the internet. Um, but uh, there are in increasing threat on the such uh, internet communication. The right of the communication used to be believed to be secure against the, any eavesdropping or, or tapping because the light wave is confined in the small region of the core. However, uh, actually, the right of communication is not secure. Um, in, such a, in the following situation. Uh, suppose we have a cable with two fibers in it. Uh, in, in it is very usual case, not the two, but uh, several fibers are harnessed in one cable. So many communication are, are flow in parallel. So now uh, suppose one fiber used to send the signal or, com uh, or communication, and the other firewall is connected to the sen sensitive photon detector to monitor the communication. If the firewall is go straight, then there's nothing in the monitor, just a signal is appear. However, the light cannot bend steeply. So if we, if we bend the firewall for 90 degree, like this, then the, the signal appears in the monitor side. That means if we use our very sensitive detectors, we can tap the signal uh, very easily. And, uh, the, and, and in usual, usual light of communication, it, there is no trace on this tapping. So we need some encryption of the, the communication. Now the almost all uh, important communication are encrypted. But uh, there are uh, many incident or reports on the um, internet security. Uh, we, I picked up from the uh, news in this year. So in Spiegel says in January issue that VPN, virtual private network security is only virtual. It says uh, NSA, National Security Agency, 
operates a large scale VPN exploration project to crack the connections and to intercept the data from the uh, inside the VPN. And the second case is Lavabit. Lavabit is a known as a, a vendor of encrypted emails. Uh, it is it become very famous because the Snowden, Mr. Snowden and his friends use the Lavabit to communicate the, the, the secret information. But uh, uh, government, US government agency ordered Lavabit to give up the, all the secure key or was private key in, in the uh, SSL. Of course, Lavabit registered to this order, but uh, finally they gave up and uh, uh, they send the, the, the private key to the um, government. Then, uh, before that, of course, the US government collected the, the, the emails, um, but it was encrypted. But then the private key is here. So the, all the collected mail, not only the Snowden's mail, but the everybody's mail was decrypted. So this shows the, the, the uh, danger that the uh, secret email highly depends on the private key, so a security of private key. And the third example is uh, called logjam attack. The logjam attack is the uh, so-called man in the middle attack. So uh, if I uh, want to communicate the electric server, from an e-commerce server or something, but uh, uh, the uh, uh, attacker yeah, in, in the intercept the communication in the, in the middle, and uh, they pretend me and, and ask the server to use the old-fashioned key. That means the uh, weak key in the key exchange pro uh, the uh, negotiation in the key exchange protocol. Then the server uh, agreed to use the old key because the, the server, most server support the old uh, key exchange protocol because of the downward compatibility. So uh, now the uh, attacker in the middle can, leave, can get the uh, secret information, but this secret information is encrypted by the weak uh, weak uh, encrypted code. So they can decrypt the secret secret C. This, um, and this is because the uh, private key, key exchange protocol is depend, uh, needs uh, some, um, needs to upgrade to keep the security against the, the progress of the uh, decryption technology. And the modern crypt people said that, no, these are not the fault of the private key system. Private key system doesn't decrypt at all. However, uh, it, is, it is the fact that the, uh, such kind of attacks are valid. So, what can we do with the quantum? Um, first is uh, very simple. And uh, uh, it was shown in the first day of this conference, or UQC, UQCC, that uh, uh, if we use the quantum key to, for, for, the A, for the AES, that means that the, the quantum key distribution or quant, quantum key strengths the, uh, <coughs> such, such kind of the classical communication. And uh, these two attacks are reflected the, the very nature of the private key system. First is that the Lavabit, um, actually Lavabit uses the uh, RSA 
scripts uh, private key system to the exchange the private key. So, and uh, it is known that the RSA has no forward secrecy. Um, but uh, uh, as you know, the quantum key distribution or quantum cryptography will, will, will provide the forward security. That means the, the, the once the key is exchanged, the, the key is secure forever. And the third thing is, as I said, the third thing is because the, the updating of the um, key exchange protocol. And of course, the quantum key, key distribution needs no update as, as long as the, the equipment works well. So we, need, we don't care about the con such kind of com downward, com downward compatibility. So the use of QKD should be the, uh, some primitive and uses in the crypt system. The situation is following. Here's uh, Alice and Bob want to share the secret key. And, and they have uh, two channels, quantum channel and the authenticated classical channel. And here, the communication channel, it has full access. However, uh, the laboratory of Alice and Bob's uh, protected, it is as, uh, the assumption. Then, it is known that QKD protocol provides information theoretical secure key, secure key, and uh, it can be worked as a supplier of shared key to other, other information theoretical security protocol or as a, uh, any other protocols. So the future of QKD is following. As I said, um, key generation procedure of the quantum communication and the key distribution, that's the combination of physics and information theory. And to, to provide the information so we can take security, the key remains secure in the near future, in the future, in, in for, forever, uh, no matter how the, 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 uh, the technology is improved. And also the QKD provides a quantitative guarantee of security. And it is given by the, uh, the tight estimation of the upper bound of the information uh, from the statics or a result of the quantum communication. And uh, as a result of that, we, the QKD has a, a function of detecting the EBS report. And, uh, it is shown that QKD has the universal, the property of universal, universal composability. And uh, I would um, talk about later on the universal compatibility, composability, sorry. And let's see the, uh, what the modern crypt system prove, prove the security or, or, or analyze its security. In the modern crypt system, they need some um, definition of attacks and goal of the attackers. Here, uh, first one, uh, uh, these three are rather strong attacks. Um, first one is the CPA, chosen parent techist attack in the world of the modern crypt system. The attacker has a uh, cipher takes correspond to the the plain takes. Then this this plain takes is chosen by the attacker. And second one is so called CCA one, uh, chosen cipher takes attack. So they so the attacker has the plain takes corresponding to the chosen takes so, so chosen cipher takes. And uh, again, the, the, this cipher text is chosen by the uh, attacker. Um, here's the type. This is, should be cipher. And uh, cipher text are chosen before the attack. This is the, the cho chosen cipher text attack. The strongest one is uh, CCA2, 
adaptive chosen ciphertext attack. So the, it is similar to the chosen ciphertext attack, but the ciphertext can be chosen during the attack uh, concerning information of text and ciphertext pair uh, already obtained by the attacker. Uh, this is a very strong situation. Suppose uh, you got the exam in the classroom and you find a very difficult problem. What shall we do? The CCA2 attack allow you to ask your professor the answer of the, of the similar problem, not exactly the same problem. It is not, this is forbidden, but uh, uh, they can ask the answer of similar problem. It's a great help for, for the attacker. And the goal of the uh, attacker is um, defined following. One is perfect dec decryption. So if, if, you, if, if you have a, a ciphertext and, and you, you try to the, de the decrypt ciphertext in four the, the text, and uh, uh, one a property will prevent this, this type of goal. More weak goal is partial decryption. Part of plain text or some information about plain text is, is op, to, to be obtained. And uh, uh, if, if, we have, if the, the, sec, the crypt protocol have semantic security, uh, that means uh, indistingu indistinguability, then the, the, this type of attack, that this type of goal is, is prevented. In, in this shape, it is defined following. Uh, here's uh, some plain text M and the encryption um, function E is indistinguishable with the other um, pre the result of plain text in polynomial poly time. Another goal is falsification to prevent others. So to create the, uh, another ciphertext from, from the known uh, pair of plain text and ciphertext. And this, and uh, no marable property will prevent this falsification. And the relation of attacks and goals are given <coughs> following. So as I said, the strongest attack is CCA2. And if the, if the uh, crypt, crypto protocol prevent the cipher t uh, CCA2 of, of no marable or, or falsification, then it is identical to the, uh, the prevented CCA2 in this indiscriminate, that means the, uh, prevent the partial decryption. And if, the, if these properties are, are satisfied, then a uh, weak, weaker attack can be prevented, of course. And so this CCA2 indiscriminate in, in, in or normalable is very, um, very important on the, uh, required property. However, this property is very difficult to satisfy. Uh, as I know, uh, only two type of protocol uh, satisfy these properties. And let me talk about the universal composability. This is the, the uh, required function to use uh, some primitive as a uh, sub-protocol in the large secure, secure protocol. And QKD has uh, such kind of universal composability. That means uh, QKD, if, if the QKD used as a sub-protocol and the QKD security is kept, if the imperfection in key distribution is not enhanced by the information on the uh, upper layer crypt system, so if you use a, a quantum key in, the, in your communication or something, and the eavesdropper uh, listen to the, the pair of cipher text and plain text, but uh, it, this information would not help the eavesdropper to, uh, to, to know that another quantum key. So, in other words, the universal composability is that the imperfection of the, uh, the whole application, including the sub-protocols, is the sum of these components. And uh, in the modern CRIPS system, 
this universal composability is proven to be identical to the indisability to, to adaptive cyphertex attack. So, the, so the, if the uh, public clip system is the strongest, then the universal, pro, universal composability is satisfied. In quantum system, that, as you know, the quantum information theory tells us that the first personal distance will never increase by any physical realizable pro process. That means a CPTP map. So that means the uh, if stopper cannot improve with the information <laughs> from, from, the, uh, from the other protocol. That, and, uh, so that means the uh, universal composability is satisfied. So, uh, uh, so what I, I want to say is that um, not talking about the, uh, the computational complexity or something, but the, uh, QKD has a very, very uh, good property in the sense of modern crypt system. And usually we, we, we are talking about this QKD is slow. But uh, actually, it is not the, uh, so slow. Um, sorry, here in the Japanese, but uh, this, this is the, the benchmark test of key exchange uh, by uh, pub, public clip system. That means MCLIP, elliptic, uh, uh, elliptic uh, Duffy Feldman type of the um, <coughs> protocol. And the, here, the, the uh, the functions used in the protocol. Uh, um, in this benchmark test, uh, you, they use the open SSL system and uh, uh, the, uh, operate the speed command, then uh, uh, count the operation per, per second. And here are the two servers, uh, Intel Core i7 and uh, AMD Opteron. And it shows, uh, say the, uh, for example, it, it uh, commonly used uh, NIST P256 type. Then the operation is done uh, a thousand times per second. That means uh, uh, 256 kilobit per second. It is of course, uh, about the same rate we, op we obtained in QKD protocol, or about 50 kilometer length. Of, of course, the uh, transmission distance is longer, then the QKD key rate will be decreased. And uh, uh, it might be says that uh, they only use some uh, rather cheap machines. So, and the uh, QKD equipment are much, much, much more expensive. So if you, so if you use a, a more expensive machines for, for the uh, public, clip, uh, public clip system, then the, the, the key rate should be higher than QKD. But uh, uh, it is um, very common numbers. So and, uh, they satisfied with this, this number. So why they say that QKD is too slow? Now uh, let me talk about the QKD equipment or QKD systems. So here's the, uh, one, of the, one example. Uh, it is in the uh, conventional type of uh, light of communication equipment, including the four potential here. And the construction of, of the example of construction of QKD system is following. Here the light source and the encoders here, and the photons are transmitted in the channel and the detect in the dec in uh, and the decode by the receiver and the detected in the photon de detectors. The photons are encoded in it is for D B eighty four system in Z basis and the X basis and so on. And this is a quantum communication channel. And to work the quantum communication channel, we need a controller to provide the random numbers and the uh, distribution board. And of course, the, here's the detection 
correct the detector signal and random number to for the, the, the distillation engine. Finally, we obtained the final key. Uh, uh, after the key distillation process, then we, we obtained the final key. And of course, we, have, we need some uh, synchronization to work uh, properly in that kind of uh, kibit system. Here's one, here's the uh, key, one of the key device. This is a asymmetric Mach tender interferometer um, used here and here to for the uh, turn beam and the encoding. So what is, what we can um, define the security of the QKD system? One, one certainly is following. A QKD system is secure if the ideal or but a virtual judge is here and try to discriminate two processes. One is the ideal protocol here, uh, where the eavesdropper have no information on the key, so it's a separate, separate. Only the eavesdropper knows the, the length of key bits. And, but the, in the real, real protocol, the eavesdropper interact with the Bob, and Alice and Bob, then the, the, the state is the, the, the combined with the Alice, Bob, and Ibitropa. But if the, this ideal judge cannot distinguish these two states, given here, that means the upper bounded by the failure probability of failure correction, then we said, that QKD system is secure. And mathematically, it is already proven. But the, the, the problem is how to uh, certificate this situation. The physics behind the security is following. Alice and Bob want to make a key from this one basis, send this state. It is called the RQA. But uh, Alice can also use the X basis, given here, like uh, superposition of the uh, X computational basis. The, the main point is that Eve cannot distinguish between two protocols. So only she can do is the same eavesdropping to the both, pro both protocol. So as a result, uh, in the real, real pro protocol, Ibzopa obtained whole information about the, the key, and but and without a trace of the eavesdropping. However, in this case, Ib has no information, and the, the result is the mix, the mixed state. The phase information is uh, is is, is dis dis disrupted. So here the phase, that means that the virtual in the virtual protocol we have a phase error. And this phase error is a measure of information leakage. So mathematically, uh, the, the trace norm distance between the ideal protocol and the real protocol is upper bounded this, this. And here the, we set the some, num some security parameters then we have uh, uh, upper bounded with uh, um, privacy amplification. The key distribution, key distribution protocol is uh, following. First, the, we have uh, quantum communication and obtain some numbers. And of course, the, there are some uh, absorption or loss of photons. Uh, Bob has sometimes has no result and sometimes uh, has some, some result. So they keep the uh, photon detection even. It's a SIP uh, process and they are negotiated in the proper public channel. Then they have uh, some strings of bits, XA and XB. And they, they too uh, select some samples from their strings, like here, 
and the compare and then the estimate the error rate. And if the, this error rate is less than the threshold, then they use the error correction and uh, privacy amplification, and finally the, they obtain the final key right here. The key point in this procedure is that the error rate estimation. If the error rate estimation is wrong, then the whole final key is insecure. Um, the, the problem is that uh, we only have uh, some statistical analysis. Uh, we, we cannot know the exact value or true value of the error rate. So, uh, so we want to have some this type of relation that the uh, true value is some in some range. Uh, the prob the and this probability that the, the uh, true value in this range is close to unity. Then we have a secure key. In this, in this uh, procedure, random, random sampling is very important. Ran this randomness, if, if the randomness is, is not, not satisfied, then it is not, not guaranteed the security or uh, this type of analysis. Suppose we have, we need epsilon is small and delta is rather small value. We take the long samples or large sample, then we can decrease the error probability as the statistic uh, told us. For example, if the delta is 0.5% and we use a one megabit sample, then we have epsilon tend to be <coughs> minus 11. This 10 to minus 11 is that the one key, if we, you, if we make a one key per second, then the key information will leak only once in the, the 3,000 year in average. 3,000 year is much longer than the most of, of lifetime of the information. <laughs> this is the summary how to obtain the key rate, final key rate. And here's the, the final key rate, R, and uh, uh, eta is uh, um, some, some efficiency in the, in the transmission range, and K is some factors. In, uh, <laughs> depends on the protocols and the, equi and the equi equipment. Uh, here, we need to subtract the key bits but for the error correction and privacy amplification. Here, the key bit for the, uh, sorry, bit for, bit for the error correction is directly calculated from the bit error rate with this formula. However, the sacrifice bit for the privacy amplification, is, we cannot directly calculate, only estimate from this estimated phase error. Uh, here the, uh, some, we need some um, security theory. And here to calculate the sac sacrifice bit, first we define the requirement from the user. That means uh, how, how, much, how small the security parameter are. And uh, what kind of equipment we use, the intensity of light, coherence, or some, and so on and so on. And, uh, and uh, as a result of the quantum communication, we have a detection rate and error rate. So we put together into the security theory and calculate it, and then we obtain the sacrifice bit. But the security theory is many, many type, we have many type of security theory. And they have uh, different, they work on different principle on different assumption. So each, each theory yields uh, different estimation. Here's one of uh, some example of the uh, security theory. So experimentally, how can we, the 
satisfy the security. First, we need to describe the protocol and the, the devices we used. And then, as list up the, all the assumptions for the security proof. And then, uh, about the discrepancy in real system and uh, on the assumptions. And this, so, so this evaluation is the experimental side. And the theoretical side, we, we need to estimate the effect of this discrepancy and how, how, how much we need to increase the sacrifice bit. If we can satisfy with this result, but uh, so we, it is, we, are happy, we are happy about this. But uh, uh, if not so satisfied, then we need to improve the implementation. For example, device and system design. And uh, if it is not enough, then we need to new model for the security proof. Yeah, time. So now let me talk about the uh, the concrete example for the security certification. Here are the model system. Uh, this is again here. The, we use the decoy. Uh, we we so, uh, think about the decoy BBATO protocol. Uh, here is the, uh, the for the interest modulator for decoy, uh, driven by the random number. And here is the uh, state preparation here. And the state is given by the, the two numbers, uh, the phase shift in each arms in the mass uh, center type modulator, uh, the, the state given by this equa equation. And uh, we can obtain the Z1, Z0, X0, X1, so on. And uh, uh, here the detector decode Z0, Z1, X0, X1, and X, uh, Z0 here. And we assume the uh, the, de the intensity of the light should be uh, th uh, three types of intensity. One is close to vacuum, and two, uh, one is, uh, this is a signal, and uh, this is decoy, and decoy signals is weaker than the signal. And in think about the security, indistinguishability is a key. If the states are indistinguishable to you, she need she forced to apply the same absorption strategy for the, all the state. So the strategy is not necessarily optimal for some state. So if it's upper, we absorbing disturb the state and uh, discover. It. And then the, this, this this disturbance will upper bound the, with the information on the key. This is a fun, uh, given by the function of phase error rate. If the system is distinguishable, it can improve her eavesdropping strategy, or she can, even she can directly measure the key <laughs> So in this case, if, if the uh, states are distinguishable, then all the security analysis doesn't work, so we cannot satisfy the security. As I said, the, every theory has some assumptions. And here's some assu here's the assumptions behind security proof. Um, like uh, first one or um, second one is rather common. One is that, uh, of course, we the the system should not disclose the secret. That means the choice of the bit value for a key and the basis of choice of basis and, which, and choice of which path should be decoy and, and which, which uh, key, a uh, row key should be used for, for test sample and which type of hash function we use. These are secret information and should be kept secret for a while at least. And second assumption is no external observation. I, as I said, that uh, this, uh, this assumption that uh, sender Alice and the receiver Bob is isolated, 
so there are no side channel. Out. That means the information about the key is obtained only from the quant the the operation in, on the quantum channel. These two are uh, very fundamental assumption, and then if if these two are satisfied, then uh, security theory can work. And then the, uh, some assumption on the security theory. First one is uh, very common. Quantum mechanics is correct. And we don't, we are don't, we don't want to talk about this uh, argument. And we have information theoretical secure authenticated channel. And this is also proven. This, this one is the most important for security certification that the device ops are expected. For example, in Kowasi's security proof, <coughs> his, his theory assumed that the, uh, the, the pulses from the transmitter is independent. And there's no phase correlation between the pulses. And the, the, the pulses has no number of photon and no, uh, no sorry, no, no uh, average photon number and no photon number distribution. And in the detection, uh, device independent detection probability is necessary. These are the assumption in Kowasi's proof. And uh, it as I said, it depends on the um, security theories. <laughs> Let me talk about first uh, assumption, no disclosure of the secret. We need random choice, so this means the two random numbers are required. And apparatus should ref the ref reflect the ran random choice. And the random choice should not affect the uh, other characteristics of photon. Uh, photon has uh, some uh, characteristics like uh, polarization, amplitude, uh, phase, and frequency, and, and also the light shape here and the timing and spatial mode. For example, we use uh, polarization as a, as a, as a dec as to, en to encode the uh, bit. The transmitter requires the, the selection of, of phase should not affect the other properties. Otherwise, Ebizropa can obtain the information from the other, from by, by observing other characteristics. And these characteristics are independent from the, the choice of the polarization. So uh, they, the absorbing issue will not leave the trace. Of. So this is the example. We, if we use four light sources to emit the given polarization, but if the timing of the pulses are different, or frequency of frequency of the, the, the lights are different, then if the dropper just uh, measure the, the timing of the pulses, or uh, we using spectrometer and uh, to observe the uh, to observe or separate the, dif the different colors of light, then then she can obtain the information about the key polarization. But but in this absorbing. Uh, will not affect the polarization state, so so they cannot detect, de detect it. And uh, let me talk about the second type of uh, side channel. See, this is a, a typical uh, classical uh, side channel attack. Actually, this is the, the traditional Japanese play. Uh, this is very popular in Japan. Uh, this is the Kanate Honchu Shingura Act Seven uh, scene of. Uh, Gion Ichiriki Jaya. It is the, uh, of course, this is no meaning for you, but uh, it is important information. Um, here is a guy. Uh, he he planned to a secret project uh, against the. Uh, it is not forbidden. Uh, it is forbidden by the the, the government. So uh, and uh, he now he is reading a secret letter from his from his, uh, his friend. But uh, actually, he is very careless. Um, he, he is in the open place, and you can find two eavesdroppers. 
of course, one is the guy in the floor, uh, under the floor. Uh, he directly reads the waste of the paper. And the second is this lady. Actually, she uses uh, um, optical method for this dropping, um, like this. So, uh, this secret data is read, read by these three eavesdroppers. Um, actually, after that, um, she, he pulled the letter and then uh, he was found out. And, uh, and uh, here's some water here, and, and he recognized her by the reflection. The lesson, lesson of this uh, play is following. There are eavesdroppers everywhere, but if we use proper counter measurement, finally they will be detected. So this is the uh, uh, main point in to, for the uh, side channel attacks. In conventional systems, there are many, many uh, side attacks uh, uh, proposed. So first is one is direct tapping and the power analysis, the measuring power, power consumption, the detect, detect, uh, encryption and detecting devices and timing analysis and the failure attack here. The failure attack is that applying the signals or clock or out of the spec of the equipment, then it will be, it will be made a failure or errors. And then uh, this abnormal, uh, analyzing abnormal operation, then, we, then, then they will find uh, some information about the key. And the tempest attack is, so-called tempest attack is that the collecting the electromagnetic waves um, emitted from the, uh, the uh, encrypted equipment. And it is shown that uh, even a, a cheap radio can use to this attack. And uh, this radio can receive the uh, leaked electromagnetic wave and uh, with the laptop computer, he, they, they can steal keys from PC. And this, is, this experiment is given in this website. And the problem is usually the echo design, so the low power consumption de design will make uh, some easier to the, so the power attack because uh, uh, in, this, in this design, uh, the hard, the, in this design, the, the, the most of the circuits are idle in the low or, or light problem, but uh, uh, all the circuits are working in the hard problem. So comparing the power consumption, then uh, the, with the power analysis, they can obtain some um, information of which type of calculation is done in the, in the machine. So uh, the, <coughs> the side channel attack are effective for the processing with high load. Um, and, uh, and it is well known that the uh, public key encrypt system needs some hard uh, calculation done in the QKDs. And the, in quantum communication, there are another type of side channel. Actually, the, this type of side channel attack is also possible in the conventional communication system, and, and it is much easier in co conventional system. But we need to consider in, even in, in the quantum communication channel. There are some um, popular uh, side channels are given here. And of course, he is much more <laughs> uh, specialist on this type of attacks. And, and so I was, and the, the, in the, the transmitter side, the Troja attack, Troja force attack is proposed. <laughs> but uh, uh, it is, it, it can be detected by with the power monitoring or attenuation and isolation here. And, uh, and, and transmitter, is not so easy for the side channel attack. Just only the, the passive monitoring is possible. 
because we cannot um, affect the, the free will of the human, actually. Um, in the photon detector side, receiver side, the, of course the receiver receives the external signals. So the observer can have, have some have, have opportunity to control the detec detector with the external light. So the counter measurement is that the o to, to, to detect only the required signal and uh, uh, cut the all other, other uh, signal to control the devices. So we need appropriate filter, timing gate, and the detector should be identical and uh, uh, the op 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 accept only a single mode of sp in spatial mode and it should be process independent and uh, uh, monitor input monitor should be required to, to check the, uh, the, the external signal, ex external light. So requirement for the QKD equipment is following. First, as in the, and it is based on the uh, quasi uh, per security proof. In light source, <laughs> there's no phase correlation between pulses, so pulses should be independent. And in the encoder, the selection should be unpredictable. So uh, pulse shape, spectrum, polarization, oh, two, there are two polarization, some <laughs> um, mistake and special mode for all the, the quantum state. And, and uh, if we use the decoy protocol, all these properties are identical for signals and decoy. So the signal and decoy should not be, um, uh, in, should, should not be distinguishable. And the, uh, the photon state should be faithful, that means uh, Exactly the x0, x1, z1, z0, so on, something. And the pulses should be known photon number distribution. So the intensity is, is controlled, and the photon statics should be some uh, known. Usually, we believe the photon statics should be Poisson, Poissonian. But uh, if the photon distribution is known, it is not necessarily the Poissonian, of course. <coughs> and there's no assumption in quantum channel. But uh, in the detector side, we need the uh, filter, fit, so on to limit the light input only to detect the expected mode of light and timing and so, so on. And, and the photon detector should be identical to if, if the uh, <coughs> if the the uh, detector the, dif the different detector used for different bases, then the, the these uh, properties are, uh, should be identical. So identical photon detection efficiency and dark and probability for all photon de the photon detector is required. And uh, then, how we can <coughs> uh, measure or certificate to cert that the, the the QKD equipment satisfied this requirement. First one is to the design in the transmitters and receivers. <coughs> in design of, of the transmitter, of, uh, it is happy with that uh, rather, rather strong before the, uh, this alternator, so we can monitor the light with a conventional detector. <coughs> so we put the, the test point here and here, then we monitor the light. <coughs> then uh, in this test point, we monitor the laser, and, uh, then we use a sing only one laser for, for uh, all the photon state. And the gain sit laser we use for phase randomization. And in the uh, interferometer, we need to, to control the photon state. So we use a stable interferometer and the precise control on the optimum modulation is required here. 
and to limit the mode and polarization, uh, for the connection should be the <coughs> single mode polarization maintained fiber. And we, uh, we need to put the um, filters to define the wavelengths of light and monitoring the here uh, to, uh, to, to detect the Trojan force attack. And here the design of the receivers. Unlike the transmitter, we need to consider the any input of the photon. The absorber can use any type of input. But uh, for, for, the sec for, for the security certification, we need to limit the input. So we, we restrict the mode by filtering and by using the single mode fiber to, to define spatial mode and to, to define the, the, the receiving wavelengths, we use filters and uh, uh, we use timing gate with low time gate, time, low jit, time jitter to define the receiving time. And we, we should monitor the dark count and, and using the autobus control and then the, the all the dark counts of, of all these detectors are equivalent. And the, to equalize the, the detection efficiency, we need some uh, equalizer here. And after the, the equipment is designed and fabricated, how we can measure or, or experimentally guarantee the security or, or <coughs> Or, or the characteristics. We can use actually the conventional measurement devices in the transmitter. We can use uh, interferometer to, to characterize the phase correlation. And uh, also, the interferometer can use to evaluate the photon state. And sampling oscilloscopes can measure the pulse intensity and shape of the pulse. And now we have spectrum analyzer to measure the wavelengths of the light here. We, and here we need the uh, two random number generator, but uh, uh, we need some tests here. And this is, we ha we, I put the question mark here, and I talk about it later. In the receiver side, uh, we, use, we can use the light source, variable beam light source, for emulating side channel attacks. And uh, we can use transmitter close to here by the quantum signal generator to, 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 to provide the, the uh, test standard signals. And then the uh, receiver works and the time response is measured by something also scope and counter to measure the, the, the detection efficiency and that count. But actually these function are included, of course, the, the, the receiver. So what we shall do is the, to, to equip this type of uh, conventional apparatus and the uh, uh, receiver and transmitter in the one place to, to, to characterize the, as, a, as a equipment. But uh, of course, uh, as I said, uh, we can measure but uh, uh, how we can know that this result is satisfied uh, has fine. So we need uh, some uh, quantitative criteria of, for the measurement, me measurement or measurement result. The idea, basic idea is that uh, more information is random choice and indistinguishability. So random choice is guaranteed with the number, random number. So we need to characterize the indistinguishability between the state um, A and B. This is some typical state. 
And this indistributivity is, of course, the, the quantified with fidelity of this state. So, so we need to somehow the, uh, quantify the, the fidelity between two states with some um, measurement, and then modify the theory to, to include the effect of fidelity is not equal to zero, equal to one. And uh, the, the, the theory, is in by, with, by the theory, uh, the particular acceptable lower bound of F is obtained. <coughs> so the, the security theory, different security theories provide different uh, results. So uh, we each need to make or select the better theory or, or so the example of the, um, the theory, the results of here, this is based on the GLP theory. And if the fidelity is less, uh, the reduced to from one, and eta is the, uh, the efficiency of transmit, efficiency or, or transmittance of the, the quantum channel, and the key generation rate per pulse is here. So, so the, it shows that the, the if the transmittance of the channel is low, it's a 10 decibel loss, then the fidelity, the allow lower bound of fidelity is just a 10, uh, 0.997 or something. And the, the effect of, of increasing by, the, by the reducing the transmittance of the channel. And in the following, I will show some recent development of the uh, theory and the experiment. These are, I, ho I hope these are the case study of, of uh, security certification. One is uh, uh, the phase correlation between pulses. And this phase correlation will result in the uh, distinguishability of the basis and the decoy and signals. And here some the, the theoretical calculation are given here. And the uh, this result is taken from uh, this, and it says that um, um, <coughs> the trans, uh, allowed to transmission loss is highly decreased if the the, fa the process has fa phase correlation from here to here. So, how to? How, how to measure the randomization and, and, and what is the criteria for crowd randomization? And here we need some model. And, uh, and, and happily, that uh, the, the laser, the phase of the laser is known to obey the such Gaussian probability distribution. And, and if the, this probability distribution is given, then the uh, visibility of interference between adjacent pulses are given here. And the, here the calculation again, uh, of the uh, so-called imbalance of quantum point in GLP theory and uh, against the as a function of the standard deviation phase here. And, and uh, uh, so, so the Standard deviation is increase or infinite standard deviation means that, that there's no phase correlation. So phase standard deviation is increased that and the inverse is decreased. And the result is all, almost uh, uh, flat, become flat. That means uh, uh, it, it's almost the same as the no phase correlation result. And visibility is given, and, uh, and this in this point is given here. And this is also the, uh, the dis distinguishing between the, uh, the decoy and the signal, uh, the function of standard deviation of phase. And here also the, the visibility should be less than this value. Usually the gain switch laser satisfied with this uh, <coughs> low visibility. Here's some, here's uh, uh, the uh, real measurement for the high, very high, clock speed at, at, at 10 gigahertz. And here we show the uh, interference fringe 
and the excitation is, is low enough, then there's no interference appears. However, the, the excitation or, or, or bias current is larger than the significant interference appears. The point of, of these fig figures are from here, A equals here, B, C, D. So, so it shows that the, uh, the, the laser should keep the lower bias current or lower excitation here. That means that uh, uh, the, if, the, if, if, if the, ba the bias current is low, then the, the turn of time is longer. If, and then the, the, ta the turn of time is larger than the effective photon life, then there is no phase correlation between the pulses. So this is one criteria to, for, op op for operating the gain laser diode. Another example is that about, about the space state preparation for out. Uh, usually we use such kind of the, uh, the asymmetry mapping the interferometer and, uh, uh, ma and, the, and also the Mahatan the modulator for preparing the state. And the state is given again here and to create such state. But the, the, the modulation is not perfect, then the, so this is a desirable state, ideal state, but uh, uh, somehow the state are, are tilted, and then the facility between X and Y is less than unity. And the LP result the theory says that the uh, key, key generation rate is decreased with this formula, so delta, is uh, so called uh, uh, imbalance of quantum coin, and it's, it, it, it's given here. And this, and, and uh, it is exponentially with the, dis the, the uh, distance. Here we have the, the, the uh, transmittance in the denominator. But uh, uh, recently, uh, Tamaki's group proposes a new. Uh, protocol or new proof uh, that uses uh, only three states. And, and they say that as long as the, the, the three states form a triangle in the phase space, then the, uh, then the, the, the then this, this, this is the actually the phase mismatch state is that in the, uh, uh, talk in, in, in DLLP theory, but uh, if in their theory, that three state protocol can estimate exact phase error rate by utilizing the result from this measurement. Uh, but uh, even in this case, these three states should be known. So, and the result of the key rate is here. Uh, based on the GLP theory, um, BBB, BB8, this BB8 protocol, uh, the state preparation flow will decrease the transmission distance here. Uh, only only 3.6 percent will decrease the, uh, the transmission length from 50, 150 kilometer down to 70 kilometer or something. But uh, if if the um, sorry this is, this is added 7.5 7.2 percent. Um, but the uh, uh, three-set protocol, Tamaki protocol shows that there's no effect on state preparation flow. So by improving the model or proof, the state preparation flow is almost negligible. So, but still there are many open issues. One of course, uh, did we overlook something? But the uh, uh, requirement from the theories are cre rather clear, and photon pulse are defined with finite number of characteristics. So, actually, the, the 
assumption, some of our assumptions are, are satisfied with, uh, with our analysis. But still, there are some probability that the new side channel may be found in the, in the nature. Of course, the uh, measurement device independent or device independent protocol will help us, but uh, further study we should be need and uh, we need to be care, careful about the, the possibility of new side channel attacks. And the other question is that uh, uh, we can do the measurement, actually, uh, measurement accuracy is, in, is enough or not? Uh, um, of course, the measurement is the measurement, so that the, they are affected by the, the errors in the equipment and, uh, fluct and uh, uh, affected by fluctuation and drift in the measurement devices. And so, so we need to care about the accuracy about the measurement and we need to develop the method in it from the, uh, the imperfection of the measurement. And the third question is that in, in, in theory, we, did we treat the imperfection well? Of course, the, if we become cons conservative, then the security is higher, but it is simultaneously lower the final key rate. So, so the good, good or <coughs> the theory provides a, the perfect security will provide a zero final key rate, and it is no use. So we need to develop a good theory uh, that shows, uh, that certificate the security, but yields rather high or enough final key rate. Finally, let me talk about the random number generators. In high speed QKD system, we need a great number of the random keys. So if the clock is one gigahertz, and then the uh, set preparation and decoy, and so key bit, key bit, basis, decoy, so we need four bit per pulse. And uh, if we collect the, the 100 megabit for the code length, and detection rate should be some this value, and then we need the 25 gigabit per, per second in, in, the, uh, the, uh, in, in transmitter. And these, for, for these large, num large or long random number sequences, the classical tests are not uh, sufficient. Actually, the uh, famous classical tests like NIST uh, will, uh, uh, will show that uh, even the pseudo random number is random number. So it is not satisfied with classical test. And uh, as, uh, as mentioned in several times in this conference, the quantum mechanics will help. So the, we believe in the quantum randomness in quantum mechanics. But uh, the problem is how to evaluate non-classicality the, with the required high accuracy in the random number. Of course, we need some models and we, we need to uh, some careful analysis. But uh, uh, one remark is that different requirement is different use of random number. That means the key bits should be kept uh, to number, for, and it, it should be kept for a long time. But uh, other choice selection bases and the decoy selections are not uh, necessary to be uh, secure for a long time. Just just uh, in the process in the key distillation. So. So, the, so we can use this difference in the key bit and uh, reduce the, some the, <coughs> the load for the key num random number generators. Okay. So finally, for the development of code, let me talk about the development for quantum second network shortly. Uh, we are now trying to develop a more sophisticated uh, QKD technology with high performance and high security. And we, we are trying to make some quantified criteria for secure QQD system. And uh, we, tr we try to integrate network, uh, network uh, as, I, as you see in the first day of the conference. And also, we're thinking about the new generation quantum 
healthcare technology uh, to make the more practical QKD and other no, crypt, crypt protocols. Here's one uh, scheme in the deployment of QKD network. We define a quantum platform and the uh, application. The important thing here is that we set some demonstration point here. So uh, under this point, the QKD platform has responsible responsibility. But once the key are supplied to the application, then key client should be responsible for this, for the use of key. The, uh, so this separation or demonstration is very important to make uh, uh, practical networks. Okay, let me summarize my talk. Now the quantum QKD in our book over here, and uh, now, now it, it become pr rather practical. And the good things of QKD is uh, it provides the, the universal composability. It is stronger than most of the public key crypt system. But the uh, uh, security certification on the practical system is now ongoing, and both theoretical and experiment. And uh, now we have some demonstration of practical QKD networks, and hopefully uh, the QKD networks will be deployed in the, in, in the near future. That's all, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Akihisa, for a very interesting talk, uh, to a lecture. Uh, we have time for uh, a discussion and questions. Please, questions, comments. Okay, if somebody I can ask a question. So you presented- No question, oh sorry. <laughs> okay. what? Was there anybody there? No, no. No, okay. <laughs> So you presented a plan for uh, kind of security testing of the receiver part yeah. of, of Bob. Mm -hmm. uh, can you comment uh, a little bit? So you did some testing of the source, mm -hmm. imperfections in the source, uh, but you also presented a slide where you had uh, some source and detector and <laughs> countermeasures for practical attacks and on the receiver side in Bob. Yeah. Can you comment? Uh, on dot plan, has it been implemented, tested, or is it just an outline? Um, when you talk about the Japanese uh, QKD system, you showed yeah. uh, how you plan to handle imperfections in the source and right. in the receiver. Can yeah. you t talk a bit more about the receiver part? Um, in the receiver side, um, Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the yeah, next yeah, slide. Yeah, 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 next slide. Oops. Yeah. Um, actually, it is difficult to in the receiver because, uh, as I said, that uh, the observer can use any type of input. So, so the um, what we can do is just to prevent the uh, control, control signal get into the receiver. So we need to limit the, the light from the outside, only the uh, required signals. Um, so to, to, to limit the signal, we use filters, and so, so we, we need to measure the, the, the uh, characteristics of filters so this filter was uh, small transmission range, uh, narrow transmission range, but uh, high, very large um, Hobbit, Hobbit length, ranges. And also we need to measure the uh, timing of the detectors, and the, of course the, the characteristics of these detectors carefully. So these are the, the points for the, uh, the, the receiver. Um, at, at that time, it might be enough, and of course there should be some uh, monitoring circuit uh, for the um, strong to to, pre to prevent the uh, strong signal into get into the uh, um, detectors. Um, um, now, uh, 
that's all what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. So the monitoring circuit has not been uh, developed yet? Yeah, we, we, we need some monitoring system. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Early on, you, you mentioned that uh, a private key exchange running at a rate of about 256 kilobit per second, and then you say that's comparable to what QKD can do right now. Mm -hmm. My question is, is that a proper uh, um, comparison? Meaning that, mm -hmm. you know, should we really be compared with something that's slow? I mean, is that realistic? Yeah. Of course, the, 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 com the comparison is not, not fair at all. Um, uh, but all uh, one, one fact is that we, um, in, in this uh, c uh, public system uses rather cheap server to make a <coughs> make, make key. Uh, and uh, this, the, the, the QKD equipment is much, much expensive, much, much expensive. So if you use a, a much better server, then the uh, key generation speed should be rise. And of course, the, uh, QK, the key, dis key generation rate of uh, the QKD is limited by the, the transmission length. So if the transmission length is longer, then the uh, generation rate is, is lower. So this is just not, not a, a fair comparison at all, as I said. But uh, uh, I'd like to say that the people are now satisfied with this 256 kilobit per second for, for key generation. And QKD can provide this speed of key generation. So uh, why we, we accuse that QKD is too slow? That's what I, I would like to say. If you use Toshiba's system uh, with 40 kilometers fiber, you get the same speed. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions? the transmitter, yeah. at a certain point you show that to prevent, for example, the um, some external light to come in, you mm -hmm. can use additional detectors yeah. for this light, because mm -hmm. the, li the light is probably very intense, so mm -hmm. you can detect it yeah. with these extra yeah. detectors. But in that case, shouldn't you specify these extra detectors, so you're adding degrees of freedom to your system that mm becomes more complicated and so it's possible to, that it creates additional problem. For example, you can have a back reflection from mm -hmm. these detectors out to Eve. So yeah. this could help the Eve instead of preventing the attack. Yeah, I agree with you that uh, um, additional component will provide another problems. Um, and uh, sometimes the improvement makes uh, some security fall. So we need to be very careful. And uh, uh, one thing that uh, I, I, I put the detectors for the uh, one example, but uh, usually as, as uh, uh, you, your group shows that um, proper passive devices such as isolators and uh, alternators are, are enough to prevent such kind of Trojan force attack. So. Um, at, at that time, I'm not sure that the, the, the uh, uh, additional detector is required or not. Maybe it's not so, it's it not required, but um, only use the caref only uh, careful design using the such passive devices are you using. Okay, maybe another brief question. Uh, if nobody, uh, let's uh, thank the tutorial speaker. Thank you.